Ja. Wir gehen bei We're going I thought you were making me a smoothie. Mommy. Hmm. I say I want to pick a tunnel. Oh, how about you race your race cars here? You put your cars down and race them? No, I cars right now. Oh, how many do you have? I have one, two, three. Ooh. There's one, two, three. Wow. You have to see it go down, bit. Yeah. Good morning, you guys. I am having a cup of coffee, and I'm down here with Porter in a semi-clean basement because we cleaned it the other day, and the boys have yet to come down here and mess it up. Grayson is at school right now. It's Friday, so it's the last day before the weekend, and then Avery is taking a nap upstairs, so I'm just having some quality time with Porter, but I thought I would bring out the camera because I wanted to recap yesterday. I meant to vlog yesterday, and honestly, I was just like so overwhelmed yesterday. I didn't even have a thought to bring out the camera. So I'm going to bring it out now and kind of like update you guys on how it was. So yesterday was our big appointment day for Avery. We went to a genetics appointment and then we also had help me grow come and evaluate Avery. So the first appointment, like I said, we had was a genetics appointment. It was at Nationwide Children's. <laughs> this is our second time at Nationwide Children's. The first time it was for her um, cardiology appointment, which we have another one in April. Um, but this one, it obviously was for genetics. Um, so if you're new to my channel, I have a nine month old daughter. She is delayed in her gross motor skills. She also has some funky facial features. And so the pediatrician is wondering if maybe there's something underlying that's connecting all of these things together. So we went and saw a geneticist. It was my first time like doing a geneticist appointment. I'd never done anything like that before. So we went and they took Avery's height and weight, which she's so close to 20 pounds. She's almost there. And then I forget how tall she is. 30 inches maybe is what they said. I know percentages because uh, they sent it to us after the appointment. She's 93rd percentile for height. She's so tall, so, so tall. And then weight, she's like 60 something percentile. Like she's, she's great. Um, and then of course they measured her head and her head is like 17th percentile. It's always been tiny. So after that, we then met with a, I don't know what her title was, but she was basically like the assistant to the doctor of the geneticist office. And she just asked us a million questions about like people we have on either side of our family. Do they have similar symptoms as Avery? Did we ever need, you know, geneticist appointments? You know, just different things like that. Just asking medical history. And then, of course, asking uh, questions about Avery, her development. Um, is she eating? How is she sleeping? Different things like that. So we got through all of those. And then... We met with the actual doctor. He was so young. He was either our age or younger. So he must be new. Um, but he was like really nice. Basically, I always feel like I go into appointments and I'm like, yes, I'm going to go to this appointment. I'm going to get answers. It's all going to be resolved. And then every time I'm proven wrong. So um, basically, they were like, well, it could be this. It could be this. It could be this. It could be this. We don't know. And we were like, okay, so how do you find out? And they're like, oh, you do a blood test. And we're like, oh, perfect, let's do that. And they're like, mm, wait, no, we can't do that today. We have to contact your insurance, figure out if your insurance is willing to cover it, and if not, how much it's going to be. And then once you okay that, then we can order the test. Then you go do the blood test. And then it takes about three weeks to get the results back. So basically we went to this appointment and it was like, we didn't get any answers. They gave us a bunch of ideas what it could be. And then they were like, or it could just be nothing. It could just be that she's delayed because of her plagiocephaly or her helmet. And then like after that, 
is fixed like she just catches up like we we don't know and then of course they're like yeah so the next step is we're going to contact your insurance and that could take up to a month <laughs> and then we'll be in contact with you so it was like super frustrating i feel like we're getting closer to answers but then maybe we won't have answers i don't know so it was okay the good news is like there's not something that stands out like immediately to like the trained eye and the other good news is what it sounded like is if she does have something it's not severe so it's something that like if she is diagnosed with something like maybe it would come up with like problems throughout her life but not like severe ones that she that would like inhibit her from living like a full life a full normal life if you get what I'm saying. But anyway, kind of frustrating. Um, Anthony did take a half day off of work, so it was nice to have him there with me. But yeah, so now we're just kind of in a waiting period of waiting for insurance um, to get back with our doctor to see how much this blood work is going to cost. I don't even want to know how much this appointment with the geneticist cost. I hope our insurance covers a lot of it. Um, when we went to the cardiology appointment um, a year ago when she was a newborn, that appointment was a thousand dollars and we have that exact appointment coming up again in april because they want to do the whole appointment all over again to see if the heart condition has resolved itself or not so that's another thousand dollars coming towards us so that's just great um so anyway we finished that i headed back home my mom helped me and got like porter off of preschool because he was at school and then got gray off the bus and then like an hour after we got home, we then had another appointment and this was with Help Me Grow. I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't have high expectations with Help Me Grow because it's like a state funded program. And so I'm like, it's gonna be these people who don't really care, don't have a lot of knowledge and it's just gonna be a waste of my time. But honestly, I was surprisingly wrong. They actually had a lot of knowledge. They had a lot of tips and tricks for trying to get Avery to be sitting on her own and to just like catch up developmentally. And so I was actually pleasantly surprised. It was really a really good appointment. Um, basically, they like conducted a screening on her and it had like five different categories um, like motor skills and then like social and like emotional and then like feeding and like different stuff like that um so they ask us a million questions about Avery I mean just a million and then they also looked at Avery had her do some things to see what she could do what she couldn't do after the whole assessment I mean I could get into it but I will I'll just like talk about it real real short for you basically what they said is she passed all of the categories except for two. Two of them she failed. The first was gross motor because she's not sitting, she's not crawling, she's not pulling up. Um, so that's obvious. That was why we were referred to Help Me Grow in the first place. But surprisingly enough, the category that she scored the lowest in and that she also qualified for is her feeding and all of that which I have brought this concern up to the pediatrician. I brought it up for her nine month pediatrician appointment and he didn't seem concerned about it. I've brought it up to the geneticist, didn't seem concerned. But when I brought it up to help me grow, they actually listened to me and they were like, no, that sounds like a problem. So I don't really know if I've ever talked about this on the vlog, but Avery has zero interest in solids. And for her age, it's just, I don't know if it's normal or not. Obviously it's probably not since she failed that category on the assessment. But when my boys were her age, they were putting everything and anything in their mouths. And I'll put her in her high chair while I'm feeding her oatmeal or purees, which she does fine with. But I'll put puffs on her tray. I'll put mashed up banana on her tray, um, little bits of pancake, just anything. Teether crackers. She has zero interest in them. Just recently, she did start picking them up and throwing them on the ground. But not once has she picked it up and put it in her mouth. No interest. I will then, like, after a while, I'll take a puff or a bit of food and I'll put it in her mouth. And nine times out of ten, she'll, like, thrust it out of her mouth with her tongue. And then um, if I get it far enough in her, like, to go down her throat, like, she just ends up gagging on it, the, like, every time. So I told them about this and they were like, yeah, that's, um, that shouldn't be happening. You know, she should 
want to try different foods and like be curious about eating. So they think that might be caused by her tongue tie, lip tie, cheek tie, all that when she had it when she was little or could just be her personality. So they gave me some ideas on things to do with getting her liking foods. Mostly it's like introducing different textures to her over and over again so she gets used to it. So I'm going to keep trying and working with her on that. But yeah, she just doesn't really care to put food in her mouth, which is strange. Another interesting thing to know is with the gross motor, with her not sitting up on her own, crawling, different things like that. They did make it seem like a lot of it is probably caused by her plagiocephaly and her helmet. They are thinking that the helmet is just, it's an extra weight, even though it's like, not a lot of weight because we have like the dock band and they their like main spiel is that it's like only three ounces or something like that it's still extra weight it still blocks her vision in some areas so i think they think that that is a big cause of it too and also the plagiocephaly and just having like some of her head be flat like when she came out like she probably she, maybe she only like realizes half of her body is like hers and the other half is just like out in space somewhere the big thing that came out of that meeting is they were like she's behind but she's not as bad as she could be and she will catch up we are confident she will catch up it might have to be like after she gets the helmet off she'll catch up or you just need to do some extra steps with her and then that will help her catch up. Anyway, she qualified for two categories. They said they that means she would qualify for her service for services through this Help Me Grow program. Unfortunately, there's a couple problems with this though. Help Me Grow, obviously it's state funded, so they don't have very many physical therapists on hand. So their program is a physical therapist would come once a month to the home to work with her and that's it. And there, there is a long wait list of trying to get on to get even a physical therapist to come to your home through this program. So I was like, okay, well, what are my other options? So they were like, well, you could go through private physical therapists and just call around and see who takes your insurance. But the problem with this is you first need to make sure that your insurance will even cover physical therapy because not all of them do. And if they don't cover it and you go through a physical therapy, you're going to get a bill for like $4,000 don't want to pay that and so i was like okay so what if what if i can't get in with your program my insurance doesn't take physical therapy and i'm like what am i just sol and they were like there's one last option that we could do which would basically be like there's a program where you could meet with a physical therapist over zoom so it wouldn't be in person it would probably be just like once a month again, but it would be something. So if anything, like I think there's that to fall back on, but basically our options are not very good. And so I just have to keep working with Avery. I have started looking up like um, physical therapist, uh, licensed YouTube videos and um, exercises they say to do and articles and different things like that. So I'm just gonna try to work with her. Anthony and I work with her day in and day out. Um, and it does seem to be helping um, every week she gets stronger sitting up. It used to be that she wouldn't sit on her own at all. Now we've gotten up to like 30 seconds sitting by herself. And even um, the Help Me Grow evaluator yesterday was like, you said she could only sit for 30 seconds on her own. And I was watching her and she it was more than 30 seconds that she was sitting on her own. So she's slowly, slowly getting stronger. I know she's going to hit it eventually. It's just she's not hitting it when she needs to be. So anyway, sorry, I just keep talking and talking, but it was a long day of appointments. I felt really overwhelmed. I just went and like cried in the shower after that because it was just like really overwhelming all the information coming at me because like at one hand, it sounds like, oh, maybe it's a genetic con condition. And then on the other hand, it's like, oh, well, maybe it's just because of like this helmet and plagiocephaly. So it's like, there's no real answers to it. And it's just a lot of unknowns right now. Like, we don't know if she has a genetic condition or we don't know how long it's going to take her to catch up developmentally. And yeah, it's just a lot. And plus I have like two other kids. I'm also watching my sister's child um, during the week. So it's just a lot, <laughs> but it's fine. We're handling it. Um, I love watching Ivy 
And we we started to actually get like a really good routine down. I just finished my second week watching her and we, we she does really well. So we're handling it just fine. And uh, my sister only works till the end of May and then she has summer off and then she's not sure what she's gonna do. So we're just taking things day by day. That's kind of all I can do right now is just take things day by day and um, thank goodness for my mom because she has been coming over and helping me so much. She basically was at my house all day yesterday because I just had those two really big appointments. She's been coming for all of like Avery's helmet appointments and helping me watch my niece. And yeah, I basically have her coming to my house like once a week because of all these appointments that I have. Plus then I have like regular appointments like doctor appointment for me or dentist appointments for the boys. And yeah, it's just a lot, but that's okay. This is a fun time in life being a mom of like a lot of young kids. And one day I'm gonna be bored and lonely and all my kids will be gone and I'll be wishing for these days. Well, maybe not permanently, but just to go back and like relive one of these days. So I'm just enjoying the moment as I can. But yeah, sorry, I wish I had more to update you on. Um, just wanted to let you know how those appointments went. We don't really have answers. <laughs> That's kind of how, how yesterday ended. So anyway, today is a new day. Um, it's Friday, but I'm not watching Ivy because my sister took the day off because uh, Ivy has a doctor appointment. That's my niece. Her name is Ivy. So it's like kind of like I'm off my job, but then I'm not really off my job because I'm meeting with my other sister to work on my part-time job. And then also, of course, I'm always with the kids and being a mom. So those two jobs aren't ending. But anyway, um, so I hope you guys are doing well. Um, we don't really have much coming up this weekend. Tomorrow, Grayson has a birthday party. Um, it's at a trampoline place. So he is so excited to go. He cannot wait. And he keeps telling me that he wants to have a birthday party with all of his friends, but that's expensive. I don't know how these parents are doing it. Like, these parents are inviting the whole class and renting out, like, these trampoline parks or, like, this taekwondo studio. And I'm like, this sounds expensive. I don't know that I want to do this with Grayson. He did tell me that he wants a Super Mario-themed birthday party. So we are going to do that, but I might just stick with the family birthday party again until, like, he really, really wants a friend birthday. I feel like I can push that off a couple more years. I just, I don't want a million presents from friends. I don't want to invite the whole class and then only have, like, three kids show up. It's just a lot of unknowns and... It just sounds really stressful. My life is already stressful enough. Plus, I've got Avery's first birthday coming up at the end of March. That's before Grayson. So it's like I got a plan for that. Yeah, it's just always something at this house. So yeah, if you stuck with me to the end of this, good on you. Let me know if you have any questions down below. I have a lot of questions. I don't even have answers to them. So if I don't have the answer, I can't help you there. But I'm going to go and play with Porter until um, Avery wakes up, and then we'll keep on with our day. So what are we going to play with, Port? Um, ma, the kitchen. Oh, you're going to make me some food in the kitchen? Uh, uh, I'm going to buy you at the store. Oh, okay. All right, well, we're going to go play in Porter's play kitchen now. So if more comes up today, I'll record it. If not... I guess this is the end. Bye. Bye, Mommy.